honestly, at one point, my introduction to leftism was basically Kyle Collinsy. Mm -hmm. And honestly, right now, I do not listen to Kyle Collinsy. I wow. think he's, I think is his approach to politics is extremely silly and counterproductive. All right, I wanted to go into this perspective and or viewpoint that a caller on the David Pacman show went into discussing with David Pacman. And the issue that the caller brought up was that Kyle Kolinsky, as well as certain other left tubers, are too idealistic within the context of their approach to politics. And moreover, even at the national level, Bernie Sanders and or Bernie Sanders policies were also conceptualized, especially within the context of the 2016 and 2020 Democratic primaries, as being too idealistic. Now we have to put this into context and perspective. Bernie Sanders policies, especially policies such as Medicare for All, are not idealistic visions. That's the root of his argument. For example, if he said it once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, thirty times over, Medicare for All and or a single-payer health care system already exists in all other developed nations. Moreover, he's also made it clear and pointed out that it's not that Bernie Sanders came along in 2016 and decided to create this social program called Medicare. No, it was created during the 1960s along with the Great Society programs under Lyndon Baines Johnson. And the vision of the Lyndon Baines Johnson administration was that the eligibility age of Medicare be lowered. So for example, is for 65 to 55 to 45 to 35 and so on and so forth until everybody was covered. Thus the term Medicare for all as opposed to now Medicare for 65 and older. And even if we get into some of his other policies as well, be it legalizing marijuana, for example, in Canada, we did that about three years ago now, in 2018, and even other less discussed policies, such as Bernie Sanders advocating for teachers to get paid 50K a year. Because, of course, in certain states, they're within the 30K range. Now, obviously, at the superficial and face level value, one could easily assert, well, how is that going to be possible? 50K a year for teachers? That's such an idealistic vision. But again, it's not the idealistic vision. It's merely just catching up to all other developed nations. Thus, I would frame it in many ways as being the pragmatic approach. So, for example, in Canada here, teachers within the context of my province of BC already get 50k a year. And in fact, in other provinces, it's actually higher. And moreover, depending on the province, it's actually exponentially higher. So, for example, my neighboring province of Alberta, teachers get paid 60k a year. And in places in the province of Ontario, teachers actually get paid even more on a yearly basis. Therefore, his policy platform within the context of 2016 and 2020, which is largely what Kyle discusses and talks about within the context of his show, are not idealistic policies. Therefore, I would frame them very much as being pragmatic policies. Why? 
because all he's trying to do is catch America up to all other developed countries in regards to handling certain markets and or regulating those markets in light and or interest of the public good. But uh, let's see this exchange that uh, David Pacman had alongside his caller. I'm curious, Ricky, are you talking about politicians or media people that you believe are falling too far towards idealism rather than pragmatism? Oh, media, m media people. But oh, really? Because honestly, at one point, my introduction to leftism was basically Kyle Kulinsky. Mm -hmm. And honestly, right now, I do not listen to Kyle Kulinsky. I wow. Think he's, I think he's, his approach to politics is extremely silly and counterproductive. Um, because you, so th you think he's, you, you're saying he's too idealistic and not pragmatic enough? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying, and it's and Jimmy Dore, Jimmy Dore also these these um they, their way of viewing politics, I think lead people to a bit more um when they try to equivocate the left or the Democratic Party and the Republican Party like they're the same, or uh, when you have Jimmy Dore saying that the reason why people does not have health care is because of AOC, like those tough makes us um, make the left, in my opinion, my opinion, right, um, not as productive as we want it to be. See, that's interesting. I, I think that, you know, I don't know. The Jimmy Dore stuff, I think Jimmy's operating in a different sort of universe. I'm more familiar with Kyle's views. There's a difference between useful idealism to kind of set the goal in a reasonable way versus counterproductive cynicism. So in my, this is a very limited experience because I, I really don't watch other shows like mine. I've seen a few Jimmy Dore clips over the last two, three months when we talked about his, um, his attacks on me or whatever. Jimmy Dore right now, I would characterize as counterproductively cynical and full stop. With Kyle, I need to see the examples you're talking about, but in my experience, one of the differences between Kyle and me is that he certainly is more idealistic and I'm more pragmatic, but I think there's a real value to idealism because if you have only pragmatists, you get into a vortex of only focusing on incrementalism. And I think that having the idealism as part of it as long as it doesn't get you beyond being willing to accept steps in the right direction, I think I, idealism I is valuable. 